Hey guys, I was totally, totally not prepared. I was like, I didn't hear what the last thing was said was, so I was like, oh my god, what's going on? Um, well, if I am live, how are we doing today, guys? I am Moon Runes. I've got up nice and early to uh, showcase some lovely Resident Evil uh, 7 New Game Plus. Um, we are going to go and actually hopefully get a pb today i've been i've been so close i've been on the edge of pb guys for so long so we're gonna go hopefully so uh for those of you who don't know uh i'm gonna get the game going because this game has a rather unique prospect where you cannot skip any cutscene in the game apart from one which happens to be the best cutscene in a game which is annoying for you guys in chat because you get to miss uh the category we're going to be running today is new game plus easy so we're going to have access to all our new game plus items which is incredible chat they make this run absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm just going to introduce my co-commentator today, who is Spoopy Penguin, while the run gets going. Spoopy, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, yeah, I also run this game. I run New Game Plus Easy, and I run the DLCs. Yeah, Spoopy, is, Spoopy you're a world record holder in DLC, aren't you, Spoopy? Uh, yes, in a very meme -y category right now. <laughs> I have the Joe Must Die new game world record. Nice. Um, right, guys. So I'm going to explain a few things about the run, about the game in general, just while we're going through this initial cutscene. Uh, I'm going to tell you now, guys, that if you do ever t intend to run this game, you will hate Mia's face within the first month. I've seen that face about 7,000 times. Oh, yeah, we need the timer started, guys, if anyone's there. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. I do that every time. I get so excited about starting the run, I forget to call out the uh, the start of the game. Um, so, uh, basically, you're stuck in this unskippable cutscene at the start of every game, uh, which is pretty funny. I would go back and restart, um, but the intro, like, we're already, like, a minute into the intro, and I don't want to subject you to it anymore. So, the premise of this game, we are uh, Ethan Winters, who's a new protagonist in the RE7 um game series uh some properties of this game is we run in uncapped as you can see so i basically run this game in 720p like low settings to get as many frames as possible uh we do this for a variety of reasons basically though the main reason is that the faster the frames the faster everything happens in the game so the faster your menuing is um and sort of everything like that everything just goes a little bit faster when you've got uh, uncapped frames it is diminishing returns so after after like you know 60 frames it's kind of a bit null and void but there's a certain certain um tricks and stuff that require you to be above 300 fps like the phone skip which is incredibly hard to get so if we get it guys we will be very happy we will be super happy and we're gonna go for it um, so, uh, what we're doing, as you may notice, as is unusual for a Resident Evil game, this is in first person. Um, for those of you who know the series well, you'll know that Capcom kind of took a different route, uh, in terms of the game through, like, Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6, and they got more action-based. And uh, they decided to redo the formula for Resident Evil 7, which, in my opinion, was one of the best decisions they ever made. Um, so they took it into first person because it was partially developed for VR as well, uh, for the PSVR, um, if you've ever played it. So the run, we finally got control of our main character now and we're starting. Um, for those of you worried about the timer, there is the game goes off in game time, so we'll be able to see the final game time anyway at the end of it. So there's not much we can do in the initial um, little bit of the game, we're just kind of keeping the routes as short as possible. And going from point A to point B. Uh, if we're lucky, we might get a little boost. And it, we do name this in the community. It's called Daddy Boost. It's extremely rare. But basically, Jack won't spawn there. And he will be um, on his merry way. Um, the game in itself starts with Ethan, who's our main protagonist, uh, searching for his wife or his fiance, Mia, who's been missing for like three years, I think. Chat told me yesterday. I said three months, but it's actually three years. So, and Ethan being the absolute bay that he is, just like, I'm getting there. I'm going to go get her. Not spoke to her in three years, but I'm, I'm going to go to this random crazy house in the middle of nowhere and go save, save my ex-wife. So, we all love Ethan. He's incredible. Like, I, I hope uh, my future wife will come and save me from a basement if I ever get stuck in one for three years. Um, and so, we're off. And we're just hitting the house. We're going to see our first instance here. Of retrying. So what we're doing here is Ethan has two running states. He has one quick outdoor running state 
and an indoor running state, what we want to do is maintain the outdoor running state. And by hitting that checkpoint there and then retrying, we actually maintain a faster running speed overall. Uh, and now we're just going to interact with this. So for those of you familiar with the game series, you'll notice we haven't actually um, interacted with the audio cassette tape. It's because you don't have to. And we're also going to use the 30 FPS trick. So basically, guys, uh, what, we, what we do, we do a lot of FPS manipulation in this run. Um, so you'll see me throughout the run changing my FPS to 30. And the reason we do this is because it's like Ethan gets covered in butter chat. He can slip through anything when he's in 30 FPS. He can literally slide like a champ. So we we basically, we, we slip down into 30 FPS mode so we can get our slip and slide on and squeeze through all those tight things as fast as possible. Uh, and we run through. So we're basically still just kind of in the tutorial area here. And we're just kind of like... Um, getting through as fast as possible. Uh, there's not much we can do really here. As you can see, we've done some minor manipulations where we retry and we um, use the use the 30 FPS trick to make sure we get through. Uh, what we're going to do here, for those of you who know, there's usually a zombie who pops up here. Uh, I hate him. He costs you a lot of time. Everybody hates him. He can sometimes just ruin a run out of nowhere. So we're going to really hug the wall here until we hear the fart noise, and then we get her going. So we're getting going now. We made it through the first part of the game unharmed, guys. That's that's awesome. I'm feeling excited now. We've got a run on. Let's go get a PB. Uh, we pick up the Infamous, um, kind of a staple of RE7 franchise, or Resident Evil as a whole, uh, where, you know, bolt cutters are everywhere. We'll also see a few more Resident Evil staples that are a real nod to show this is a Resident Evil game, rather than it just being a, um, like, just just any other game, really. So there's, like, we usually see the bolt cutters, we see the infamous fuses. Uh, don't see many zombies in this game, though. Although, I don't know, I don't know how you class them, the molded. I guess they could be weird zombies, I have no idea. But we, uh, we keep pushing. Yeah, bolt cutters found. We go in. So, I think this section is possibly the most annoying for all speedrunners. Uh, we do a lot of menu manipulation in this run, which you'll see. Uh, which is, you know, we'll set up everything specifically. I'll try to call out the individual manipulations that I do personally as we go through, but things get a little hectic sometimes. Um, so this point, basically, me or you are stuck behind an invisible wall. There's no way to progress this, there's no way to get through faster. And if you ever do find a skip for this, Please let me know first and don't tell anyone else because, you know, I want that free world record. <laughs> I will give you money if you find yeah, yeah. it. I I, I've, money. I've heard multiple people say we should put a bounty out there. <laughs> Just get a bounty on the go for finding a way through this section. Um, the thing is, I think it's wide consensus within the community that even if we did find a skip here, Mia is the actual trigger. So that we'd have to wait for Mia anyway to hit certain trigger points to advance the story. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Um, but that's that's my personal belief anyway, so there's not much we can do here. We just sort of meme around. We go have a look at the wonderful Baker basement. Look at these guys. They've got some boxes. They've got they've got some shoes. Like, oh my god, they're, they're living the dream. I don't know what these are, but in 720p, um, I'm pretty sure they look like unrendered textures. So we'll leave those be. But we're gonna we're gonna keep going. And yeah, we're not sure. Is there anything I might have missed, um, Spoopy, that you can think of? Uh, not really. I guess the main thing would be this part is why I personally hate Mia. Uh, yes. So. The the new so what we're doing, guys, guest house is basically the bane of everybody's speedrunners. It has very two Mimi pseudo boss fights right at the start that I will call out at the time with our nearest and dearest, Mia Winters. Being an absolute G, but she gets she gets a bit angry, guys, and we have to deal with that. Um, so we we're gonna go through and basically we're looking for around sub fifteen minutes in guest house. Looking for around sub fifteen minutes. Um, and uh, Mia 2's fight is also very dependent on that FPS counter we've been looking at this whole time. Yeah. So basically, um, like with most other, uh, like most other RE and the new generation of RE games. So in all the remakes, there's generally been a, um, there's been a 
not a bug, but an issue with the engine where basically frame rate is directly tied to melee damage. Uh, and basically that persists in this game, although not to the same extent that it does in the other games. There we go. So what we were doing there, guys, if we were waiting for a sound cue, just to try and proc Mia getting kidnapped as quickly as possible. And we're going to go and uh, keep pushing. So we're going to go hit a trigger point in the bathroom here. And we need to pull through. Spoopy, I will try and get you a little bit louder on my side. Uh, yeah, I've I, boosted I, as much as I can. Yeah, yeah, no, it's no worries. I'll try and fix that. Um, so we're coming in. We hit a trigger point in the bathroom there. Now we've run back. And this is where we come back to our wife. And we, we figure there's probably it's something a little bit wrong at this point. We're like, hmm... I don't know what you've been eating, Mia, but I think you need to change it up, love, because something's just not right. Something's gone wrong here. You're teleporting knives out of nowhere. You know, you're crawling upstairs with crazy faces. So this is a really interesting section of the game. What we do here is we don't actually resist Mia, and we run out of here. So we're running out of here to try and um, get through this section as quickly as, quickly as possible. And um, we're just going to thingy. So we're going to do a very specific setup here. Where we are going to, we want Mia basically to stand up as quickly as possible in a second. So there's a way, there's a place we can stand very specifically. Where we can um, actually get her to stand up and we can start the first boss fight. Um, another thing I'm going to mention about the run that I haven't mentioned yet is I'm playing on the Japanese version of the game. So the Japanese version of the game is known as Cero D. And it has uh, basically a load of censored parts of the run. And it senses a load of random parts. And we just, uh, so I'll point them out at the time, but over the normal EUNA version, it saves us about 28 seconds. So we're going to look at this wall here. One, two, three, four taps. We look at it, two taps to the, to the right, and then we go. And now we're just going to wiggle, and we're going to wiggle to make Mia stand up. I assume if we wiggle, she wiggles, and then everybody wiggles. So we're all wiggling. We're all having a good time. And we're going to, uh... Gonna get up, and now after the wiggle dance, we realise actually we need to sort Mia out, and we're gonna we're gonna run in it. So this is the first boss fight. That's super annoying. We got the stagger. That was good. So basically, that was that wasn't the quickest outcome. You can get what's called like uh, you, we can basically glitch into her at that point, and we can actually get a multiple hits with one swing. And uh, if we do that, she basically won't stagger and will attack us immediately. When and then we can just bury the hatchet in her neck, and we're like right. You've been too much now, Mia. We got we got to sort we got to sort this out. So the logical conclusion is to bury a hatchet in the net. So what we're doing here now is we are hitting our first mandatory phone call. There's about four mandatory phone calls in the run, um, and then after a certain little bit, the game's just like actually we don't need to we don't need to do these phone calls. You know, just 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 go. You're fine. But for the start of the game, the game's like nah, mate. You got to answer these phone calls. We can't have you not, uh, we can't have you not doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the axe again because we got a sneak and suspicion Mia's disappeared and we might need to axe her again, which is fine. We're going to do another retry here to reset our run speed. Um, so we can move a little bit faster through this whole segment. The game timer does not go while you're in that menu specifically. While you're in the inventory menu, the timer is running and the game does not pause. A really interesting little feature of this run. Um, the game does not pause while you're in the menu. Um, we're going to through. So we get our first fuse there, which obviously is a staple for Resident Evil 7. Like, is it really a Resident Evil 7 game without a fuse? You know, I'd argue that. I'd argue that point. We're going to come here. Oh, and then we're going to put that in there. Oh, that's my cold fingers, chat. Uh, cold fingers. So it's about 7 a.m. in the morning here in the UK, and it's a, it's quite a chilly morning, guys, and I haven't put the heating on. So I'm a little chilly. So you'll have to bear with if my, uh, if I'm a little bit, um... A little bit bad with my inputs, but hopefully I can keep my hands warm and we can stay all right. So you'll notice the first difference. For those of you who have played the game, this is the first major difference. Rather than getting stabbed by a screwdriver here, you get stabbed by a garden fork. Don't know why that makes it more acceptable in Japan, but apparently it does. Apparently no screwdrivers allowed in Japan. I don't know why they censor screwdrivers, but um, just a thing. Um, and now we're going to see a big difference here as well. So normally at this point in the run, Ethan would get his hand chopped off. But that's that's not acceptable uh, in the in the censored version. So they just rather than doing a new scene, they just black the screen out entirely and just leave his hand attached. 
uh, which is incredible. I, I love that part of the development for this game. They're like, should we just render a new scene for Japan? They're like, nah, let's just black it out and leave his hand attached. It saves it saves time. And uh, yeah, then, really yeah. Oh no, where am I going? I'm going the wrong way. Sorry, I, chat, I'm going the wrong way. My bad. <laughs> I went to get the fuse again. Moon's just getting all the fuses in the run. So yeah, we're supposed to come straight upstairs here. Now, I'm going to focus on this. Um, Spoopy, can you explain this fight? Uh, yeah, so this is what we call Mia 2. Um, this fight is very dependent on your frame rate. Essentially, what we are going to try and do is we're going to line it up, and we're going to try and get inside of Mia's hitbox and swing the X. The high frame rate allows you to get multiple hits um, inside of her character model. And so as long as we can get it lined up properly, you can get a one hit Mia 2. That's what we're going for. All right, that was like four hit, but I didn't die. So, you know, always good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mia, it... Mia, it's very easy for Mia to kill you if you get off of a, a one or a two cycle hit. So yeah, I just basically, if you crouch there and just wail at her legs as well, the legs count is like two hitboxes, which means you can actually kill her faster just by staying crouched there. You do have to be a little, uh, a little bit safe with her if you miss that first one hit. Uh, it's really awesome if you actually get it. It makes, um, it makes an incredible noise. And there's the most famous line in the old game. Welcome to La Familia, chat. Let's go. And a lovely little boot to the face as well. So that's kind of the first segment of the game. I have no idea what sort of time we're on. Um, but, you know, we'll roll with it. And we should aim to do that segment in around 15 minutes. It's usually a reset if you're anything above 15.05. At least it is for me in my sort of time zones. Uh, if I'm anything above that, I, I struggle to claw it back. So I need to, uh, I need to be on point. Um... So, yeah, anything sub-15, uh, I think the world record is like a 1456, I think. So if you get anything sub-15, you're on a, you're on good good times. Um, so now we're going to come to an iconic scene where we meet our main antagonist for the run. So we kind of bump into Zoe here, who's like a background figure for most of the game, but she's helping us. So the person we speak to on the phone is Zoe, and she's, uh, she's lovely. She's trying to get a vaccine for everyone, but it doesn't quite pan out, as we'll see later. Uh, and this is the Baker family. So, the Baker family have been heavily infected with what is known as the E-type virus, which is what infects me. Now, the E-type virus, um, yeah. basically, uh, as slowly put them in. I'm not going to spoil the story just yet, because in this run, you get to see the majority of the story if you're reading the subtitles, and you get to go. Um, but as you see here, there's something not quite right with the Baker family. Um, his hand is supposed to be chopped off there, but it isn't. Because, you know, we can show the knife going through the wrist, but we can't show it coming off. Um, so, this is Jack. Jack is kind of the main boss of the run. You fight him three times overall. Um, and you fight Marguerite once, who is his lovely wife here, who's cooked us this adorably lovely meal. Candlelit meal with the bakers. I, I mean, I'd never turn them down. I'd be here every Sunday. Uh, we've got Lucas as well, and we've got Grandma. Now, uh, Grandma is not quite who see she, who see she, who see she, he, who, oh, who see sheems. <laughs> and uh, she's an absolute, uh, she's an absolute mima, so we'll, uh, we'll get it. We'll, we'll explain her role a little bit more as we go through. Lucas is a bit crazy. We'll also see him a bit in the run, but I'll talk about each individual as we come to them throughout the game. We're getting there, and we are pushing forward, but yeah. Granny, Granny Evelyn's uh, a lovely lady. She just follows us around, say, you know, she just, she's just giving us moral support through the whole run. She's a whole run. She does hum a nice ditty part way through the game. Yeah, she does. She has, she's has. got a lovely voice. So what we're going to do here, chat, is we're going to uh, wiggle out the chair, because, you know, not making any noise, and we're going to get going. And what we're going to do is we're going to meet Jack for the first time. So this game in its return to form generally brings back the creepy atmosphere that I think belongs in a Resident Evil game. Like this one really like has the intensity. We're going to juke left there, not get grabbed, grab the key. We're fine. We might even be on for wall skip here. See how lucky chat is. Right, come on, Jackie. Come on. I think we're on for wall skip here. Maybe. Looking good. Yep, there we go. We got wall skip chat, which is amazing. So what you can do there, depending on the animation. 
you can basically, if he goes far enough down the corridor, you can basically um, run back there and spawn him through the wall. Um, I very rarely get that. It's not something I go for. I very much um, usually just run round. But that's really incredible. I very rarely get that skip. So it's impressive. We've seen it. This is probably one of the... I'll try and do it in the next cutscene, guys. Um, so basically, we're going to go for phone skip here. It's a very FPS-dependent trick, so I don't think I've got enough FPS to get it. I don't. Um, for some reason, I've not been getting the FPS there recently, but we're going to hit the trigger anyway, and we're going to come and answer this phone call. I will wait to a cutscene, and I will try and turn... Try and turn Mr... Mr. Uh, Spoopy up a little bit. So, we've hit the main house of the game. We're going to make up time here. Uh, yeah, I did. That's actually probably faster than my PB pace. You never know, chat. PB hype. Let's go. Uh, we're going to go here. And we're going to get our new game plus items here for the first time. Uh, and we got it. Oh, God. Run the wrong way. So, as you can see there, we picked up three items. So, we picked up the circular saw, the Albert, and the infinite ammo. The most important things. And we're going to end in this cutscene. You're going to have to bear with me one sec, chat. I'm going to quickly turn Spoopy up. So, we're going to... The game's going to minimize for a split second. So, give me, give me one second. Oh, it didn't even minimize. Oh, it did. Okay. Let me just go find Spoopy. And I'll turn you up a little bit more, Spoopy. And then we're going to be back to the run. It doesn't pause in game time. So we should be good. Oh, God. I need to minimize okay. it. Am I, am I loud enough now? Hopefully I'm loud enough now. Yeah, you should be loud enough. So there we go, chat. Um, as you got to see my lovely background there, I hope you all enjoyed it. So we, this is a cop. He is a... We needed to hit a specific trigger point there. And basically... Um, he, we hit that pillar in the kitchen after we grab our new game plus item. So as I say, we're utilizing the saw, which we use in every boss fight. The Albert, which we basically use in every boss fight. And also the infinite ammo that we uh, use throughout the run to use uh, the enhanced ammo, which increases all our damage. Uh, can we get some Fs in chat for my boy policeman here? He tries to help, but he just gets absolutely wrecked. Um, he... Basically tries to help us out and he says meet us in the garage in a minute and we're going to go to him. Uh, which is incidentally where we'll do Jack 1. Um, Jack 1 is an interesting fight that relies on a lot of trigger points, which we will see. I'll get Spoopy to explain them. Um, and we're going to go. Um, yeah, so Jack 1, uh, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to start off by trying to stun him. We're going to use a saw blade to stun him. And once we do that, we're going to go to the end of the car. We're going to shoot him. Essentially, it's going to stagger him again, but it's going to do enough damage that he's going to enter the car. And essentially, once he's in the car, we have to do a bit more damage, and he will crash the car. That's more or less the end of the fight. Um, yep. He will stagger out, and uh, you just need to keep him stunned so he doesn't grab you. But that's really the, that's really the whole fight. Yep, that's pretty much it. You're going to see a difference in Cerro D here, where the head doesn't actually get chopped off. It just gets jammed in the back. Um, always my favorite part. He makes a great face, too. He does make a great face. He's pretty, uh, he's pretty memey. So we need him to break that, and then we're going to shoot him. It got blocked by the tire, but we're okay. That was pretty quick, actually. Um, so we are on. We're just going to just pop him there because I'm bored. So I need to make a very specific headshot here. There, we got it. And then once we do that, we do some quick inventory management here. So I'm going to set up my inventory for later parts of the run. And there we go. So we need to set our inventory up very specifically for the rest of the game now. We need to keep on top of it and make sure it's working. And we're going to pop him in the kneecap. And we're going to pop him in the head. I let him take a step forward here. So he's actually a little bit closer for when the car explodes. Because I, for me, I feel like if he's closer to the ladder, the cutscene for you to get up the ladder triggers a little bit faster. So there we go. There's, there's boss fight number one. There's Jack one. It's a weirdly complex, but once you know it, kind of simple fight. So we're just going to wiggle. We're going to do another wiggle dance because everybody loves a wiggle dance in this run. We got we to gotta wiggle, wiggle. And we're going to see Jack do his infamous um, head blow off bit there, you know. You just, you know, casually, as you do, just, you know, you're infected with a virus. And we're going to hit a trigger point there. And while that, what we're doing there is we're unscrewing it while we pull this. And we go, we're going to come across here, pop that out, and then we're going to go. So we need that puzzle piece to get through a door that's down the alley. And we're going to keep pushing. Um, now we're going to switch out to do jack out of bounds. Now I'm going to do some pre 
I'm gonna I'm gonna explain Jack Out of Bounds a little bit preemptively. So Jack Out of Bounds is probably a major reset point for most runners. It can go horrifically wrong. Uh, if, if if the setup's not right, it has a really precise setup. And we're going. So, guys, we're we're entering the start of Jack Out Bounds now. So everything from this point onwards is going to be incredibly scripted. Um, Spoopy, as it happens, do you want to walk through it? Because once we get to the bathroom, I'm going to go quiet while I focus. Uh, yeah, I am still. I am actually watching the stream. I don't have the live feed up. Oh, did the live we're... fleet cancelled? Oh, yeah, right. Okay, so... bugger. It's probably when I turned you up. There we go. I'll try and get it in the cutscene. Oh, I missed the dog's head. So I've just grabbed the second dog head there. I will tell you when I'm starting the Jack Out Bounds. And then you can, uh, you can go through it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to grab a first shadow puzzle piece of the run. These are a bit meme -y. They're kind of easy once you know what you're doing. Uh, but they're not at the same time. Um, spoopy, right. Here you go. You can explain Jack now. Let's go. Alright, so once Jack uh, comes through the room, we're going to shoot him. It is going to stun him and then we need to get around him. And once you do that, you're going to go drop down the broken staircase. You're going to complete a pendulum, which we grabbed earlier in the main area. You're going to complete a puzzle and grab a, another dog head. Um, once you've done that, we're going to make sure that Jack is falling down the stairs with, like, just behind us. And as long as he's done that, we are going to um, kite him kind of through the hallway and back into the main area. Uh, once and on the way there, we're going to shoot him, which is going to make sure he doesn't follow us too far behind. Because um, if he's too close to you, he can stop the shadow puzzle. Um, but oh, once no. we get to the shadow puzzle, um, so that was a bad Jack out of bounds, so we have to kill him. Uh, yep. Rip. Every once in a while, Jack can uh, just not do it correctly. He'll just screw you over, and you just got to kill him. So we, uh, we're into doing a backup here. So basically, uh, what we needed to do is we needed to get the shadow puzzle done before he came into the room. Now I've had to kill him. Uh, we're going to struggle here. Um, so we're going to push through. I'm just going to shoot him loads. And Jack will stand back up. Uh, I'm going to do the... Slow Can I do the fast setup here? Let's try. Are you coming, Jackie? Oh, you are. You're a bit close, actually. So... Oh my god. I think we just died. Uh oh. <laughs> no, he didn't die. Okay, I'm gonna do the slow setup here. Cause he he yeeted after us then. Right, come on, Jackie. Come on. Am I quickly to, uh, able to interrupt with a donation? Oh yeah, yeah, go for it. I'm gonna try and sort this mess out. <laughs> All right, we have a donation from Phil Frill House four five one uh, five dollar donation saying love the hat moon. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Um, it's part of my like channel. I wear a lot of hats. Um. But yeah, you know, it's nice and cold this morning, so at least I'm not roasting myself to death, which is great. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a, it's a nice Manchester bee hat. All right, we're going to set up here. We're going to set up for the Outer Bounds. There we go. So there we go. That's how you do Outer Bounds, Jack Outer Bounds. Basically, to do... Oh, I didn't even switch down to 30 FPS. I didn't need to to scrub past him. Um, so what we did there, guys, was we used Jack um, to push us out of bounds. So Jack's grab animation there actually shoves you forward, which is really amazing because what that does is it pushes us through the banister, which then clips us out of bounds. So we do a small sequence break here, and we're going to drop into bounds here, and we're going to load. And we're in. So we've loaded back in and we've done a small sequence break there. So what we've done is we've got the red key card early. And now we're going to push through and carry on towards Jack 2. We see our first proper molded there. And we're doing a small puzzle here. Where we take red hand and the third one. Then we grab this. We're going to get a key here. And we're going to go. So that was pretty good. We had a bad Jack out of bounds, guys. Usually you would get that a lot faster. And it, would be, um, it wouldn't be really that. But thank you for the donation, guys. Uh, raising money for a fantastic cause here in the UK. So I really appreciate any money. Absolutely incredible what ESA is doing in uh, UK Speed Gaming. Um, so we're just kind of going through the game now. We're going to the boss fight number two. Um, Spoopy, do you want to do boss fight two explanation? Uh, yeah, so this is going to be Jack 2. Essentially, um, he is going to grab the red dog head. And Jack is going to kick us into this arena. Um, very, very quickly, once we're up, we're going to back away from Jack just enough so he doesn't grab us. And we're going to try and shoot him in the head as soon as possible. From there, we're going to use a circular saw to get him into basically a phase two. Uh, he's going to turn around and grab this big set of 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre looking scissors. And we are going to grab a chainsaw um, just for later. And once he's back up after grabbing the saw, we are going to shoot him again, saw him again, and the fight's going to be over. Uh, we're also doing a bit of menuing just to make sure everything is in the right space. Because again, menuing is extremely important in this game. Yep, so that was pretty perfect, actually. That was almost, uh, I don't think, that that's pretty much uh, a perfect Jack 2 uh, from my side, which is pretty awesome. I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite excited by that. I very rarely get that fight because the the what we what we need to talk about is the iframes in that section. So Jack has some iframes, so you can't just shoot him immediately. You have to time it for the second he starts moving, which can actually really throw you off. If you fire a second early, you miss kind of the easy cycles, and he literally goes crazy. Um, he literally goes crazy. Uh, there was and also a difference in Sarah D with the end of that fight. Um, yes, there is. At the end of at the end of non Sarah D, it takes longer um, because his body pops and he's just some flailing legs. But in Sarah D, that doesn't happen, so you can just saw the door almost immediately. Yeah, pretty much, which is always handy. We love a bit of extra speed here. And um, what we picked up there was our first key. So it's really the game has that very uh, Resident Evil trope of you've got key specific doors that only certain keys can access, which is. A lovely homage. We're going to do some inventory management here. So what we did, we've set ourselves up for the next puzzle where we can just go boom. And we just literally input all these now and we keep going. So we're going to push forward. And we're going to get through. So now we've made it outside the house. Uh, what we need to do is answer our, our second mandatory phone call here. Or our third mandatory phone call, I would guess. Where we come in, we hit a trigger point. So what we do is we go in, we leave and we go back in. Because we need to hit the leaving trigger point to trigger the phone call for Zoe to go off. So usually, casually, you'd enter that room, you'd wander around a bit, and then you'd run out. And then we uh, keep going. Um, so now we're kind of stuck here. Um, I think I know why you're so quiet, Spoopy, but I'd have to alt-tab to fix it again. But I think it might be worth it. Let's just see if I can keep it up for a minute. There we go. I'm going to boost that up a little bit, and I'm also going to start my stream again so you can actually go back to the thing. Uh... All right, there we go, chat. Hopefully, uh, Spoopy's a little louder now. All right. <laughs> those those mid. I'm louder. You should be a little bit louder in the game. The game will also be a little bit louder, but we'll be all right, chat. We'll be all right. We'll make it through this. Um, are there any speedrunners who speedrun this game in VR, Boom, uh, Bomber? There is. Um, and I know one speedrunner at least. Uh, it's not as it's not nearly as fast. It's not nearly as fast overall. Um, it's it's quite a li it's quite a bit slower. Um, but it actually looks really fun. I don't actually own a PSVR, but I'd love to try it, um, if it ever comes to PC VR. So, what we did there is we entered the call, and now we're going to what's called, uh, it's like guest house, I think, or outhouse or something. Uh, yeah, I think it's called the old house. Old house, that's it. Uh, and this is where we meet our second, uh, antagonist, I would guess, which is the lovely, fabulous Marguerite. I'm going to play it really safe here, chat, and pop down here and start shooting this. Which causes those bugs to dissipate. And then, oh, otherwise those bugs can attack you and they're a little bit annoying. They can actually keep you from crouching and crouching. Yeah. So you can you can cost yourself a second going into that segment and save yourself three a bit later. So, so we're going to kind of crouch through there. And we're going to do another FPS manipulation here. Where we drop down to 30 FPS so we can get all buttery again, chat, and slide through those spaces. So we wait till here. We drop the frames down. I didn't have the saw out. I need to get the saw out here. And it didn't work. Oh, it did. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. So basically, we should have been able to walk through that door without stopping. But we got away with it. Um, you can take a slight back step and then run back into it, and it's usually fine. Uh, which is what we saw there. It didn't cost that much time. We're still doing okay in terms of time. And we do our next shadow puzzle, which... This one's a little bit finicky, but once you know the um, once you know the sort of the general movement for each puzzle, the shadow puzzle, they're, they're a lot easier. Casually, I actually really struggled trying to get the uh, at least the warrior one to fit um, because the warrior ones are right meme lord. Yeah, they they progressively get more and more kind of um, specific with where your shadow needs to be. Yeah, like yeah, the eagle right. one very forgiving. Um, but the warrior one, you got to be pretty precise. Yeah, they kind of scale up in difficulty, I find. Like, the eagle one, you can literally just, you know, you, it doesn't look like an eagle at all, and you're just like, boom, there we go. Uh, 
And then, then the spider one's kind of the next most forgiving. It's kind of not that bad, but it kind of requires you to be lined up. And then the bloody axe man needs like a very specific thing that doesn't even look like the image you're trying to replicate. So, we've got our final trope there, chat. We've got our crank, which is another staple of the series. And also, just so you know, the reason we pick up the running boots in this run is for that segment. Because it saves us about five or six seconds through there, I think. And as you can uh, tell, yeah, our menu... Running shoes, running shoes allow you to uh, walk faster while you're walking or crouching, but we run most of this game. So, those little crouched areas, we can run a little bit faster. Yeah, they, they help out uh, mostly in those little bits. So we're pushing forward here. We're just trying to aim to get through this. We've got a little AI manipulation with Marge here, where if we don't look at her and we run a specific route here, there we go. You can actually not trigger her and you're just fine. So I shoot that one because these guys can be a little bit annoying on your way back. So I like to just shoot one of them at least. So they're not messing around with me. So that went perfectly. That was a really good little Marge section there. We are being chased by one of them. And we're going to grab a second key here. Oh, God. He's he's alive. Is he going to attack us? Don't attack me, friend. I'm, I'm friendly. There we go. We're safe. So we made it back through. And, uh, yeah, those bugs can be really annoying. Um, so we're just running through. And, yeah, so we got through this night. We're going to do a very specific setup for Marge here. Where we're going to do one and we're going to do three and one. So this is Marge one. This isn't really a boss fight, but it can cost you a lot of time if you don't do it right. So there's a jump scare there for those of you who didn't know. Enjoy that one. And we keep pushing here. So we're going to fall through the floor and we're going to go. And here we go. Let's thingy. So you're going to see me here do the ADS trick as well. Um, which is basically... Oh, I messed up. I missed a shot. So I've missed a shot here, chat. So I have to wait. I have to wait for it now. Um, so basically, I only fired twice. There we go. So basically, I missed one of the shots, which meant she staggered backwards, which is kind of slow, so we don't like that. But we got it. We got it. It wasn't that bad. Uh, oh, bugger. Got to calm down. Uh, there we go. Um, yeah, but the uh, the ADS trick, um, essentially with the G17, if you alternate between ADS in and out while you're shooting, you actually are able to shoot much faster than either ADS or either hip firing. Yes, um, that's, the, that's the key to that trick there. So this is probably one of the hardest tricks in the run. Um... What we're going to do here, it's called Lantern Skip, and it can have three possible outcomes. Either we get the slow outcome, where we fall down the hole, and Marge doesn't spawn. We get the second fastest outcome, where we kind of glitch around the top of the, um, the sort of hole, but she spawns, and you can just drop down. It costs you like three or four seconds, it's not that bad. Or we get it perfectly, where we drop straight down, and Marge spawns. Now, I've never managed to do this trick successfully at a marathon run, so fingers crossed, chat, fingers crossed. We need... We need all the love for this one. Or we could just do that. <laughs> um, yeah, and essentially what Lantern Skip is doing is we're supposed to uh, go check an area of a room, which is directly above right here. So the reason we go to the left of that hole is to line up with the trigger, and yep. then we're, we can, we're able to jump down and get to uh, this very special moment of the game. So... This is Marguerite 2. She's a little... She's she's a really fun boss fight. Probably the hardest fight casually, I would say. And she's extremely fun. I completely messed up that skip there, guys. That was the slowest outcome. But I kind of sped it up by falling into the hole really quickly. <laughs> so, you know, potato, potato. The complete mess up was better than trying to do it properly and then messing up anyway. So, you know. We saved a little bit of time. So I'm going to jump into Marge 2 here. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get 13 gunshots on her in this thing. Do you want to take over here, actually, just while I focus? Uh, yeah. So um, essentially, we're trying to trigger her to break this window. We're going to shoot three times with the Albert and then get all 10 enhanced shots of the G17 using the ADS trick. We are going to be looking up at the ceiling to manipulate her spawn. She ends up spawning in this lower level, and then we're going to use the circular saw for the rest of this fight making very sure not to saw her while she is jumping. Okay. Um, if you saw her while she is jumping, she will do this long, flailing animation, and you can you can take a hit. Um, but yeah, that was that was great. That was a very good mar Marguerite too. That was. That was, that was kind of perfect. We're, we're pretty she good on that. Yeah, the corner. 
Yeah, you, I always try and force... You, you can go a little bit faster than that, where she doesn't go down on her feet. And she literally just um, diced immediately. But I kind of was a bit slow when I started to saw her. I was a little bit far away, so didn't quite catch her. But casually, she's probably the hardest boss in the run, I would say. I mean, Jack 3, once you know how to kill him, is actually not that bad. He's very much just um, a bit of a memer. Um, so, yeah, that was one cycle Marge. That was actually really good. Yeah, um, if you don't get the one cycle, Marge starts swapping between different holes and crawling yeah, throughout the whole place, spawning a bunch of bugs. It's, um, it's really awful. If you, you can normally kill her even slowly there, as long as you keep on top of the, on the run. Uh, you can, you can kind of keep on top of it. So now we're going to a really spooky section of the run. Uh, I think casually this is probably one of the most terrifying sections of the game. Uh, and we're coming through here. So what we need to do, we've got Marge's Lantern. So this is the trigger point we'd usually have to hit before. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're coming now into uh, the kids' play area, sort of the kids' uh, part of this house. Uh, a lot of spooky stuff starts happening here where we realize things aren't as we seem. Obviously, we kind of know the run um, pretty much off by heart, so we know exactly where we're going. But this bit's usually very dark and very scary, and then this happens. Would you say it's a little spoopy? Uh, it might be a little spoopy. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to come through here. we got to do a little crouch here. And I think this is genuinely one of the best bits of the game. So we turn around here, and we see some little legs. And we're like, oh, oh no, we don't want that. We don't want that. We're not about this life. We're just trying to, we're just trying to save our wife. So we see, we see Evie's legs here. We are going to do a retry trick now here. Now this is a really interesting retry because the reason we do it is so that this enemy spawns faster. So if you just run out there, he spawns really slowly. But if we retry at that specific point, he actually comes preloaded. And you can just pop him in the head and run past. Otherwise, you have to try and kill him standing up, and it's generally just a nightmare. Um, yeah, it's so a really hard shot. Up, he'll straight up pop into existence. Like, he won't be there, yep. and then you open the door, and then there he is. And it's kind of amazing. It's a really neat little trick. Um, so now we can skip every cutscene, uh, every phone call now. Before this, we kind of have to do every phone call, and then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, the game devs are just like, right, no, don't have to do cutscenes anymore. Screw story. You've got to go fast. Gotta got break them world records. And we just yeah, gotta go. The phone calls start involving Ethan. They're like, yeah, you don't need to listen to that. Yeah. And we're just like, yeah, yeah, let's go. So as you can see, that's probably the biggest uh, part where you see the outdoor run speed versus the indoor run speed. You get a massive boost there. We're going to hit a checkpoint here to trigger another phone call. Which goes off. I thought it hadn't gone off then. I panicked, but it's fine. And we're going to do our second trip into the basement. So now we're kind of playing catch up. We've kind of already got the red key card. Um, and this is the point where we'd usually go get the red key card. But what we're going to do is we're going to see the biggest time save for Cero D. So in this segment for Cero D, um, basically there's a huge part where you reach into the cop's neck. And you have to get the, the, um, the key for the next sections of the game out of his sort of like cavity. And it's generally very gruesome. And here's Granny. Hello, Granny. What are you doing in the basement, my lovely? You need to be upstairs somewhere. Uh, I'm in a pre-set up now for the next um, sort of menuing sections here. We're going to do our butter trick here, chat, where we're going to turn ourselves to... We're going to get Ethan in that buttery uh, visage so we can do some slip and slide. And we're through. Um, so what you do there, if you don't drop down to 30 FPS there, that enemy will catch you and you have to kill him. Uh, it's super annoying, and we're going to get the key. So we got the key there, and we're on our way. Um, so yeah, we got all buttery there, and we slide through. I think that's kind of the last instance of using the 30 FPS glitch, is it? Uh, for, for, as far as I know, I, I don't use it anywhere else. Uh, yeah, we do still retry a few times, but that's kind of the last of the FPS manipulation for the run now. And that's what we keep doing. There's, there's potential to use it in the boat, but that's usually just if you get caught on something. Oh, my favorite part there. We got to boop a schnoop. As we do, we have to, with those little crawlers, guys, the only way to kill them quickly is to boop the schnoots. If you don't boop the schnoots, they're right pain in the bum. They can jump, they can jump around, they do all sorts of stuff. They're absolutely annoying. So we need to make a headshot here to, for a stagger, which I kind of left really long there because I panicked that I was going to miss it. But, you know, we good, chat, we good. And we're going to come in here. I might and we what? for a good minute. Oh, yeah, go for it. All right. Uh, I don't know if we're still in the spooky area, but uh, this is a $5 donation from Supernova Hall, uh, Supernova Holly. Uh, Holly, sorry. 
Uh, it says, Mr. Moon ruins V2 and his community. Help me through the quarantine by giving me something to wake up to every day. Keep up, uh, keep up the amazing runs, Moon, and keep uh, being you to make the community so awesome. Oh, oh and thank you, Holly. Thank you so much, Holly. I really appreciate that. Oh, what a cutie! And I'm glad, I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you enjoy the runs. That's why I'm trying to showcase it to everyone. Like right, everybody, look at this game. It's fantastic. You should watch it. <laughs> so we're gonna do the hardest shadow puzzle here, which we nailed first time, which is oh, amazing. First time. first time. There we go. That was quick. Nope. That was quick. No memes on the warrior. Oh yeah. god. That that the the problem with failing that trick, guys, is it's really slow to reset. Like it takes forever for you to get back control of it, and like each reset costs you like five seconds. It's it's crazy. On the others, it's literally yeah, try again. But on that one, it's just like nah, takes forever. So that was warrior. So we are we're through now. We're done with the house mostly. Um. Before we go off to our next adventure. So now we're going to the Lucas section. Now the Lucas section is really popular. I think. It's my favourite part of the run personally. We have to shoot that guy. Because otherwise he hits you and he's really annoying. Uh, I shoot this guy because he's annoying too. But if we do the inputs here correctly. Uh, we can actually just get through this door fast enough. That they're really not a threat at all. Um, and we can keep pushing. So yeah we're coming to the Lucas section here. I've been messing this up loads in my practice runs. Like honestly chat. Yesterday I had the worst practice run. And it's made me dead fearful of this section. So we're going to push chat, but that's like the main house section done now. We've got the hardest boss fight killed. And now we've got to sit through this lovely cutscene because, you know, unskippable cutscenes. Am I right? Uh, and yeah, we're pushing on. That also kind of, um, kind of got uh, talked over was uh, we went up to a bedroom and we turned the clock and stuff. That yes. was uh, because we skipped that to get the red key card. Um, but the game is very trigger based, so we had to actually do that puzzle and then went and got the blue one. Yeah, so it's 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 kind of key. This game's a little bit weird. If you try to go and complete the door, um, basically it soft locks the game. Um, and even if you then go back and do the puzzle, because I think the red key card isn't in your inventory, um, I think it actually just messes up. And yeah, so one of the really unique aspects of this speedrun is the fact that you can't skip cutscenes, which as far as I'm aware is really unique for a Resident Evil game, because in every other Resident Evil game I've played, uh, at least in the remake era, or the sort of Resident Evil 5, 6 onwards era, you can skip the cutscenes. As you can see, Ethan's doing some absolute cringe lord stuff here, being a right edgy teenager, and he's just, he's just on one. Um, so we are, we are pulling through and we're going to get through and basically the next se segment, I know that, I think that bit is possibly the worst bit in the run to watch. And for some reason, even though they censor other stuff, they don't censor this bit, which is kind of really random, super yep. random. It's like you can watch a guy pull off his fingernails, but you can't, you know, you can't stick your, I suppose, stick in your hand to get a key out of a body is pretty intense. But yeah, this game has massive inconsistencies on what it senses and what it doesn't. It's a bit weird. Well, I mean, there's also, like, at the very beginning, you get stabbed through the hand with a knife by Mia. Oh, yeah. you can't get stabbed through the hand with the screwdriver. It has to be through the, the wrist. Yeah, it's I super... Like, oh, what? It's, I don't, I th I'm not sure why these decisions were made. But yeah, it's a, it's a little bit weird. So now we're going to continue on with the Lucas section. Now the Lucas section is kind of a puzzle-based section of the run. Uh, he does a lot of bomb tricks and stuff. So we aim to just get here as smoothly as possible. I am going to play it a little bit safe here by shooting one bomb. Oh, we got the second bomb. Oh, we got both bombs in one shot. No, we didn't. Oh, we didn't. Oh, oh, that was a good save, chat. Close. So we're going to block this bomb. I nearly just like got completely yeeted then, which kind of affects the whole segment. But we're, we're through, chat. We made it through fine. And we're coming through. Sometimes there's really health in there. That. Really that was a good save. save. Yeah, I know. I was very close to just absolutely blowing myself into oblivion. Um, so here we go. We're going to come down and we're going to... There we go. So there's a bomb there. We kind of just absorb the bombs eventually because it's uh, a little bit thingy. But that was a really good section through there. Apart from me nearly blowing myself up and having to take a second to reshoot the bomb. That went pretty good. The thing is, I shot the... Usually you just shoot the mannequin and it's fine. But sometimes it's uh, it's like it doesn't blow up, so you have to be really careful. But you're never usually watching for it. So now we're going to get rid of all our items. Do you want to explain why we do this? Uh, yeah, so this next section up here, um, 
basically Lucas is gonna you can't go through this next section with any weapons so he forces you to drop all of them um, also with that keypad if you put in the actual code which being speedrunners we know the actual code um, it will change it will one it won't work and then two it'll actually change and you actually go go through this whole section to find out what it is later um, but yeah and the reason we kept the infinite ammo and the Albert is because since they're New Game Plus items, we can delete them and they will go back to the box. They're not deleted from the game. Yep, um, that's exactly right. So the reason we can keep these three items is because, yeah, as he said, you can you can delete them. And we will be deleting them in a spe specific order to get them to go to the box in a specific order. So that when we pick everything up, my inventory is set up right. I think it's saw first, isn't it? It is saw first. Uh, yes. I always forget the order of these two. So we pick up the battery there. We're just gonna, we're kind of just hitting some trick points here. We need to spawn the next pseudo boss fight. This game has like weird miniature boss fights. Oh, there we go. And so we're gonna go through and get it done. And so we're gonna hit a trigger point here where we walk forward. And then we kind of take a step back and we shoot. So the first instance of a big molded spawns here. And we kind of reload cancel there to try and get at least six shots off here and then i come in cancel oh i didn't shoot the legs which is kind of bad so we're just going to block him there if you shoot the legs he drops instantly and explodes but that was pretty perfect really um it cost me about a second not shooting his leg but we on there so what we can do now it's saw first is it no it's yep saw first. Sawfers. there we go I, I you wouldn't think i'd done two or three hundred runs of this game chat so now we're set up for the next section of the game. We can't enter the Lucas True puzzle section with any items. So we can't enter the puzzle section with any items. Hence why we get rid of everything. Um, it was a little bit sloppy uh, on that fight. We should have really hit the leg, but I shot him in the crotch region instead. Because, you know, got to inflict that extra crit shot damage. And we're moving on. Um, so it's 1408 for this bit, is it? Uh, yeah, that number's burned <laughs> into my brain. Yeah, it definitely is. It's burned into my brain, too. I always forget this code for some reason and do it wrong. So it's 1408. There we go. That was pretty good. And those diagonals are very, very specific. If yeah, they're hitting, so hard exactly. to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, I got two diagonals there. Like, three is optimum, but two is great. Like, to be honest, to get two is actually pretty good. Like, they're, they're precise inputs. So what we do here is we're just hitting some trigger points there. We pick up a candle very quickly, and then we go and put the candle out so we can get to the next point of the game. And we're going to go through. So we're just waiting here. You kind of, there's a lot of waiting around in this section, and then it's all go, 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 go. It's all go, 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 go. So we are setting up our inventory here. We're going to do some very specific inventory stuff here. Uh, where we turn this on. This is the world's most unsafe cooker. I would not recommend buying this making model to anybody in chat who's looking at getting a cooker because you will have no eyebrows left when you're trying to make your mac and cheese, which, you know, nobody wants to... We're going to reset our inventory there because we're going to pick up a crank in a second that we need to access. And we're going to do the greatest puzzle. One, two, three, four, five. 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 And there we go. For those of you who didn't know that puzzle, that's how you do it. You count to five and you just go up or down. Either direction doesn't really matter. So I hope you enjoyed me counting the numbers off there. We're going to line up as squarely as possible with this. Something I haven't mentioned in this run is that for every interaction point, you want to get as closely to the position as possible that you will be in your final position because it saves a, like a tiny bit of time every every second. Every time you line up properly, it saves you like half a second because Ethan is really slow in moving to each location. So you've got to line up as squarely as possible to where you want to be. Um, and happy birthday, guys. Can we get some birthday hype in chat? Let's go. And uh, now we're going to do the bomb segment. So it's quicker to grab the bomb here than it is to... As much as you would think tearing the board off first would be quicker. It's quicker to grab the bomb because I actually think it starts the countdown a little bit faster. So we come in here. And we we uh, hit the hit the hold. And we I don't even think you need to uh, guard here. But I just do it anyway because it makes me feel safe. Yeah, so let's go. Ethan is a tank. Look at him sucking all that blood back in. What a hero, man. You're just, just like, nope, blood, you're mine. You're coming back. He on it. So we're coming here. We're going to pick up a load of items we dumped earlier, chat. 
We're going to come through. We're going to go to the bottom of the inventory until I get D-Series Arm and Crank, and then we're good to go. And as you can see, my inventory is now perfectly set up to how I like it. And um, we're going to come through here, and we're going to go over here. And we're going through. So we're pushing, pushing around now. Um, right, we're going to our third and final boss fight of the run, which is... Really scary. This run feels like it, apart from the terrible out of bounds, this run has actually gone relatively smoothly. Uh, it's an hour and a, it's a, it should be about an hour and a half speed run. I don't remember what I set the estimate to though, <laughs> which I'm hoping is not an hour and a half. I hope I've given myself an extra few minutes. I think you put it at uh, 133. Oh, 133. So oh, God. We're actually, we're, going, we're pushing estimate here, chat. We need to get some, we need to get our speedy boots on. We need, we need to get, we need to get our quiches moving. Oh, there we go. So, as you see there, we line up as squarely as possible there um, to trigger the points and have as little, like, slow movement as possible. We can do some very specific movement through this section to avoid enemies. So, we're going to hug the inner corner there. We bait out the attack. And now, guys, we get to do everybody's favorite boop. We get to boot those schnoots. So, we're going to go boop a schnoot here to get past an enemy as quickly as possible. Here we come. Hello, booper. Drop down, and he's dead. So all you have to do is literally a little tickle tap to the face, and he's done. And we're pushing on. So we're going to attempt to do a skip here, where we come round, and we push forward. We come into here, and we interact with Zoe. We free Zoe. God, I thought I thought I missed an item then. If you don't have an, a specific, like, if you don't have all the items you need, she just won't trigger. And you have to go back and get them, and it costs you about 15, 20 seconds. So we're going to attempt to save ourselves here three or four seconds by getting what's called... I don't know what the actual name of this skip is. Like vaccine skip or something? I don't know. It's, it's, fa it's fairly recent. Like it's, It hasn't yeah, it's been around a... super long. So we run down here and we hit a trigger point. We basically want a hand. We want to wait for the voice line here. We're going to run back upstairs. And hopefully when we get there, we can interact with Zoe immediately, which we can. So there we go. That's That, that saved you about three seconds. And that's what we do. But here we go, right. We also need to boop. Boop. This is Jack 3 chat. I'm going to let um, Spoopy do this one because I have to focus. Yeah, so Jack 3 is definitely one of the more intense fights in the speedrun. Um, essentially, we are going to be doing a lot of very precise shooting and a lot of very precise sawing. Uh, we're going to start off, we're going to shoot him in the face, and we're going to aim through these boards to a spot on his tail. And that tail is very hard to hit if you don't get that shot. So getting that shot is very important. Uh, from here, we're going to use the circular saw to um, burst these eyeballs that are all over his body. Once he's done with those two on the side, he's going to shoot at the one on his tail. That way we don't have to get anywhere near it. We can keep going around his body in a very, very specific order. Um, and so once he gets all these eyeballs popped... Um, how many eyeballs are there? There's, there's quite a few eyeballs. And you have to do them in a very I'm specific sure. order because you can get blocked by the body parts of Jack. There we go. Um, Oof. That was a nice backup with that G17 shot. Um, <laughs> and then Usually. we're going to stay in a very specific area because Jack's going to pop back up and he's going to grab us. So we kind of want to be where he's going to grab us. Uh, more of that not being forced by the game to where we need to be. Um, and then, yeah, we're just going to saw him until he's dead. Um, Oof. Yeah, that is Jack 3. That was that really was, good, uh, Jack 3. Well yeah. That was pretty good. It wasn't quite optimal because I ha I got the knife out by mistake, which I'm going to correct here in my inventory. Oh, God. What am I doing here? There we go. I, I have stabbed a, a few Jack 3 eyeballs. Yeah. Um, and the reason he was backing away from the door was, again, to try and be in in the area that, we, that the game wants us to be. Um, it, yeah, it can be a bit. You can get grabbed slightly faster. Um, yeah, that was a good Jack 3. So that was one cycle Jack 3. Um, it's kind of like initially one of the hardest parts of the run. Yeah, don't let go, Jack. Hey, Matt RPD. Um, welcome, friend. Sorry, don't know why I give you a random shout out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I only recently actually kind of figured out Jack 3. Um, that, that shot through that floorboard is a real tricky it's tough. to start it's out tough. with. Uh, it's but tough. once you kind of get your own setup on it, it becomes... Uh, Jack 3 almost becomes a little bit trivial compared yeah. to like Marge 2. Yeah, March 2 is definitely becomes the hardest speedrunning boss, although casually I think it's a toss-up between Jack 3. If you know what you're doing on Jack 3, he's kind of simple as long as things go to plan. 
Yeah, as long as you get the order correct. So uh, the order of the eyes, I do the eyes in, is very specific. And I kind of missed a few tail shots, which nearly messed everything up. I missed like three tail shots. But he has weird eye frames. So you have to kind of take your time on those shots. Because at the start, he gets eye frames. And during certain movements, he gets eye frames as well. So you have to sort of like... Be very careful when you're shooting him there, because if you run out of bullets and you don't get the cycle right, it basically it's right over and you're going to two cycle, which is super slow. Cost you nearly a minute. Yep, and right now we uh, we picked Mia. Uh, it is actually faster to pick Mia. There's a this cutscene up here is shorter with Mia, and there we skip a what would be kind of an extra boss fight at the uh, towards the end of the game. Yeah, so it's actually, this is a really unique thing to this game in the Resident Evil series, is the fact that it has a non-canon um, sort of story playthrough in it. Um, so, like, Capcom basically said, like, yeah, you can save Zoe, but it's definitely not canon. It's like, you know, it's it's not what happens. The storyline is you save Mia and you push through. Um, I saved Zoe my first time. I've never, ever saved Zoe in this game. Like, I have no idea what the Zoe playthrough is like. I need to do it at some point. <laughs> I've, I've completed exactly this game. It's exactly the same. <laughs> it's exactly the same, except for the extra Mia fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, interesting question, uh, Agus. Um, the reason this game looks like it's from 2010 is because I turn all the settings down to the bare minimum to maintain as high a frame count as possible. Like, you need yeah. to maintain a uh, a low setting. So we're playing in 720p with basically every setting turned off. This is actually quite a nice game for the time when you turn everything up. Um, so we need to maintain every... Yeah, basically we're in 720p with the lowest textures possible. I just thought I'd cover that question off in chat. Because this game is actually quite a nice game for when it came out. And the only thing you're not doing to save frames is interlaced. And interlaced looks horrible. Oh my god, yeah. You can actually get way more frames using the interlaced rendering. I don't know why Capcom use interlaced rendering. It's but it's just garbage. It looks so bad. You can't see what's going on. Could I quickly interrupt with uh, a few donations? Yeah, sure. All right, we have a twenty dollar donation from Needle. Much love to Moon Runes. Uh, Spoopy Penguin and the RE7 speedrun community, and thanks to UKSG for using gaming to help a great cause. Yeah, shout out Noodle. He's, he's oh, what a, a guy. Community. Also, he's a fairly new runner. Also, a forty dollar donation from uh, uh, Kaskar uh, a eighty six saying, uh, "Pleasantly surprised to see RE7 when I log on. Good luck with the run." Oh, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you for the donations, guys. Really appreciate Yiddle and Casca. What what heroes, chat? We got some hype in chat for the donations. Freaking heroes, man. Raising money for the good causes. But Resident Evil 7, yeah, I think it's an acquired speedrunning taste. Um, f because of the because no skippable cutscenes is generally massively off-putting to most speedrunners. Like it it's it's a it's a huge waste of your time while you're running, basically. Because while you're in a while you're in a speedrun, um, just wasting time in cutscenes is not good. So it's nice to see the RE7 community booming at the minute. Especially since RE8 came out. We've got a lot of new, new runners coming through. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, it's a really fun run. So if you guys ever want to learn it, uh, hit me up, guys. I'll uh, I'll help anybody who wants to learn it. Or alternatively, go to the RE7 Discord. Yeah, it's also... it's I, I, I kind of think it was a very good starter speedrun. I've, I've met a yes. lot of people that started speedrunning on this game. And it's kind of because there are those cutscenes. There's kind of downtime to think and analyze and kind of calm down. Um, it's not just go, 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 go. Right, guys, I'm going to talk about... Right, so as you know, we've switched characters now. We are playing as Mia now. Uh, Ethan's been kidnapped by, uh, as we know, is Evelyn at this point. The E-type virus is sentient and running around uh, in the body of a little girl. So we're kind of terrified. We don't know what's going on, but we've woken up as Mia after being attacked in the swamp. And we're doing the ship section. Now, the ship section casually is the most frustrating part for, like, players, I think. Like, it's so confusing when you first get into the ship. Uh, we're going to trigger, we run around that hat there to trigger a cutscene. And uh, we keep going. Uh, we're going to do a little menu uh, manipulation here. And I'm getting to my dr most dreaded fuse. Um, and we're going to come through. So what we're doing is we're waiting for this hatch to open. We need this guy here to wander down. But he kind of pushes you out the way. 
and we're going to come down and we can do a quick drop. So running in at the sideways there and kind of dropping in actually saves you a second uh, on the normal drop animation. So you kind of run around and then sweep in from the left or the right, sorry. Uh, so now we're going through ship second. Now there is two really interesting skips in this section um, that are actually kind of really hard to pull off. But first we've got to do a retry here. So we're doing a retry here because it skips a fall animation and kind of boosts you forward a little bit. So what we did there is we skipped a fall animation and we also boosted forward a little bit. It saves a quite a lot of time there um, to do that little retry. Uh, which is super cool. It's just a free little time save you can do. I don't think it's worth doing if you don't have uh, an M an, an interesting thing about that skip is some of them are PC specific and specific to having the game on a SSD or an M.2 because if the load times aren't fast enough because load times are counted in the game time um you basically lose time there if you do the retry. So it's a very specific oh I can't move. There we go. Uh, it's a very specific trick. It's kind of a, it's a little bit pay to win, but um, generally PC runners, um, I'm not sure if we have a separate category for console, do we? Um, do we? Oh uh, yeah, we do. We do. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of a, a bit of a, like, I mean, if you were somebody with a non-SSD uh, game stored on a non-SSD, would I be at a disadvantage there, I guess? But it's just an interesting quirk of this run. It's very good. So we're climbing up here. Uh, we're kind of just making our way through ship now. Um, basically, this is all about hitting triggers now. Nothing really fancy has happened until the um, until we get to a couple of the skips. One of them you'll see first. We got we kind of got God Door as well, which is kind of a bit of a meme in the community. So we're gonna go grab a fuse here, and we got it. So I got hit there, which isn't the end of the world. He can't. He, sometimes he just turbos like that. It's a little bit annoying. But our menu should be set up now, so we can just literally go boom, boom, and then we go to the door straight away. Um, so we need to remember the location of that fuse for later. And um, we're going to go meet Evie properly for the first time. We're going to go say hello to Evie. Lovely, lovely little girl just running around this abandoned ship. Nothing absolutely strange about her whatsoever. Completely normal girl. Just living her best life on the ship. Right, here she is just watching... You know, static fuzz like you do. And there we go. If you position yourself just right there, you can literally just spam inputs and it'll just do it all for you. So you put yeah, the cassette yeah, tape also, in. Yeah, this is also the only required tape in the whole game. It is. It is. You can't get, you can't progress without doing this tape. And this is my favorite character ever. <laughs> Alan, definitely the reason for every everything that, everything that happens in this game is basically Alan's fault. It's not. It's his name, Alan. I forgot yeah, his, name's name. Alan. his name's yeah. Alan. <laughs> I can do that. I called him Alan Wake once, and chat wouldn't let me. I called him Alan Wake, and chat wouldn't let me live it down. I literally made that mistake once. I don't know why I called. I was looking at Alan Wake before stream because I was going to buy it, and then, <laughs> and then I called him Alan Wake, and I literally chat just would never not let me forget it. Oh, uh, to the story part it's like. All the things going on is basically his fault. Yeah. So Soda asked an interesting question. Why are we not running in English? Um, and there's one very specific reason for this. And that is the fact that um, we're going to pick up safety. So we can not pick up items here and do a non-safe strat. But the walking shoes actually make this segment a lot easier. Um, just as an FYI. And um, so the reason we don't play in English is it's, it's actually one second faster in any other language that is not English. So we're going to do a uh, skip here. Do you want to talk through this one? Yeah, so this is called Alan 1 skip. Essentially, um, being able to get out of that room while she's clicking the uh, wristwatch, it prevents Alan from calling you uh, and talking your ear off and you not being able to leave the room. Yeah. Um, because as soon as Alan calls you, you can't interact with anything, you can't open doors, you can't shoot anything, you're just stuck there. And I think that wastes about 20 seconds if you don't get that. Yeah, it does. You're stuck there just talking to Alan on the phone. You can't do anything. So that skip doesn't look very impressive, but it actually saves a butt ton of time here. We got him. That was pretty good, actually. So basically, that molded spawns in the elevator won't move until his death animation is over. There's a faster strat there where you shoot his head on the way down, which is really hard to do. And then you shoot his leg and he blows up. Um, but it's really impossibly hard to do. So I'm going to talk about door skip here. Uh, it's called D&D &D skip because um, I think it was found by Dustin Distortion from what I remember. 
Um, Distortion being uh, used to used to run this game, and a guy called Dust used to be very prominent runners of this game. I shoot him just for safety, really. And we need to grab a bomb. So uh, we're doing the D and D skip, where we're going to try and again skip another phone call with some memes. And we do that by uh, I think he's dead. Hopefully, he should be. Hopefully, he's not in the way. So what we're going to do is try and put the bomb down in a very specific point. Now I think that was too far away. I think I was a bit late on the bomb there, so the skip might not work. But what we can't do, chat, is we can't press reload. Now, I have, like, I have a massive issue from playing, like, Call of Duty and all those sorts of games where it's just instinctive for me to hit reload all the time, no matter what I'm no, doing. I, I'm the exact same way. I have, I have hit that bomb more times than I care to admit. Yep. Uh, so we're going to come into here because we need to hit another trigger here. And we're thinking, but yeah, so FPS is one second faster in any other language that isn't English, um, which is a really cool little thing. You can run in any language, which is nice for variety. I played that a little safe there. You can generally cut that a bit shorter just to um, get through a little bit quicker. But there we go. We hit the trigger point. And now hopefully we get bomb skip, although I think we're just going to blow ourselves over here. So let's hope for the best, chat. Fingers crossed we get this skip because it's kind of a really cool skip. I think that bomb's actually good. I think the bomb's good looking at it. Yes, there we go, chat. Hey. We got bomb skip. So that's actually a really precise trick. It's super annoying. And what you do there is you usually get stuck at the door until that phone call ends. But by doing bomb skip, you generally save yourself a load of time. And we blast through these two. Uh, it's generally you can just run past them, but it's a little bit tricky. Uh, but that was a really good skip. It looks very inconsequential, but it's actually really hard to do. Yeah, it's another skip. I want to say it saves about six seconds. Basically just not having to listen to Alan. Yeah, basically, it saves you a little bit more time as well because you actually, the door animation is slow there. So I think it saves you six to eight seconds. Oh, did I get them both? Apparently I killed them all, chat. Here we go. Is he alive? Oh my wow. god, he is alive. Where was he? <laughs> he was off oh, on his okay. travels, guys. He, he was going. Um, so yeah, that's kind of section one of ship done, I would guess you'd say. Uh, yeah, I, I call this the tape. This is like the ship tape is uh, nearing nearing the end. Yeah. Um, we got a little bit of things to do. We got to go do some. coming up very close to the only skippable cutscene in the game. Yeah, we're so excited. We get one skippable cutscene, which is incredible. Uh, we get a headshot here from Spoopy Boy who tries to... Give us an absolute fruitening, but you know, we uh, we don't we don't pay any attention to him. We just pop his head off really quickly and have a good time. Uh, we kind of drop through here, and now we're going to go back up to where we were because at, on the calls with Alan, uh, he basically tells us he's doing stuff, and so we got to go find Alan and make sure Alan's not not in peril, even though we don't like Alan at all. Um, so we keep pushing. And we come around. Now we're going to get stuck in another cutscene that we can't skip because the game likes to troll us. And we're going to go talk to Alan. Yeah, if somebody can find an Alan 3 skip, I will also give them money. See, you guys, lots of incentive to run this game. Get money if you find skips. Shouldn't say that, actually. <laughs> but, Al yeah, Alan is, uh, is definitely one of the more frustrating characters to have to just deal with. He's, kind of, he's, he's an obstacle in himself. Yeah. He is. He's 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 really annoying, and Alan is basically the one who caused the entire incident by letting the EV out. He doesn't let her out on purpose, but he's. I think the implication is he's been doing experiments he shouldn't be doing in the side, and basically things have gone incredibly wrong, and he kind of gets his comeuppance now. Um, um, my theory has been that he's the one that's been talking with uh, Lucas. Yeah, potentially. There's, there's kind of a load of backstory here that I think the theories have kind of got a lot wilder since Resident Evil 8 trailer came out. Um, because yeah. of the, the potential implication that Ian Mitha were already working for um, um, the bioterrorist, what was it, BCCT? Something, BTCT? Can't remember what it's called. Basically Blue Umbrella. Uh, it's the BSAA. BSAA, that's it. I was thinking of the British Touring Car Championships, uh, lol. Yeah, but for like for this, it's also with RE8's trailer. It's kind of just like there's werewolves and stuff, man. It's all out the window. I it's, I love it. I it can't can wait. Whatever. I'm just glad it, Ethan's in it and it's first person. That's what I'm looking uh, yeah. for. So guys, we're gonna me again. There's one part that I'm really hoping to play as Mia in. Um, 
Here we go. So we're coming to our first, and we're coming to the only unskippable cutscene. Unfortunately, guys, it's the best cutscene in the run, which is super annoying. Like, super, super annoying. Um, so we're coming in here, and we get our one skippable cutscene, which is Pog, which is going to start now. Now, it, you do need to skip this as fast as possible because um, it actually carries on in the in game timer. I've actually lost six seconds there just because I forgot it was part of the in game timer while I was trying to sort something out. So now we're back in present day. So we've just been back in time to find out how Evie escaped and why she's been doing what she's doing. Uh, I kind of feel a tiny bit sorry for Evie uh, to some degree because uh, all she wants is a family, but the virus has really messed her up. Like, she's, she's way unbalanced now, and she goes about getting a family in entirely the wrong way. But she's having, um, she's having a good time, bless her. So, we're gonna keep pushing here. We need to go get a few items now, so we need to go get a crank, and we also need to get the fuse and a power cable. So, we're gonna go grab the fuse, um, that we used before, uh, and we're gonna get that first. But we're also coming up to everybody's favourite trick, God Door. But this bit, I think, is the most super confusing bit for new runners. Because, in my opinion, it doesn't really explain what you got to do. You've just got to kind of find the items and go. So, we're running through the fastest route. And we're going to go. So, we go up to the captain's quarters. Because the captain's quarters has um, an incredible little um, crank in it that we need for the elevator. And we're going to come back. Uh, again, we're going to be lining up as square as possible to the elevators and stuff. Because as you could see there, if you're not square, you kind of just teleport around in a really slow manner. And we're going. So we're coming down now. We are entering the latter portion of the run, though, now. I think this is around the hour mark. Maybe a little less. Uh, and we're coming in, and we're just going to use the crank here. So now we're entering. We're going to go get the fuse next. we got to drop down. We're going to use a little trick where we kind of bump off the ladder to prevent us doing any fall. And we're going to come straight up here. And we're going to run to get some corrosive acid. But we're going to do God Door. So we interact with this door really late. And we're going to grab it. We need to turn immediately. And then we come through and we get God Door. Oh, God Door. So that looks kind of easy. But God Door is really, really specific. It's very, very, like, there's not much chance you get to... Did I put that back in? No, I got it. Yeah. I can't dodge him, so I'm going to have to take the hit and go around. So you can't, um, basically, it's not frame perfect, but you've got to be really quick there. And you've got to interact with the door later. Uh, we're going to get square on and climb up as quickly as possible. So yeah, God Door God is kind of consistent for me. Um, but I think there's advantages. It's a three-frame window, according to chat. There we go. Learn something new every day. So the fact that I got that, considering I'm running it 300 FPS, guys. Oh, my God, I nearly fell in the hole. Which way am I going here? This way. I remember what I'm doing, chat. I promise. I know what I'm doing. I'm a good speedrunner. Um, here we go. Here we go. So there's a guy in front of here. We can kind of just ignore him and input that. Oh, he hit me, though. Um, it doesn't really ma matter if he hits you. You kind of want to... I kind of started to run straight here because he's been getting stuck in the doorway. But now we're going to go um, thingy. We're going to completely ignore this guy up here. Uh, and we're going to run straight past him. Feels bad for him. Like, he's just like, I want to be noticed. He's like... No, it's me, senpai, and I'm just like, nah, fam, I'm off. I've got to go get myself a power cable. Here we seven. And we just interact with this. This bit's a little bit slow. There's not much we can do here. But yeah, three-frame window on that god door, guys. Let's go. And we pick this up. And we're going to run past this fella. He's trying his hardest, bless him, but he ain't getting anywhere. And we're just like, see your friend, try better look next time. I'm, I'm off. I'm going. I'm a spood runner. Got to go fast. So, we're coming through. Hopefully, this guy isn't going to be a meme lord. No, he's way out of the way. So, he got stuck in the door the other day, and he hit me, and it really knocked me into red, and it ruined my entire ship section. So, now I'm super wary of that guy. And um, we're coming through. So, we're just going to drop down now, and we're going to do some pretty specific inputs here. So, we're going to go ba-boom, and then we're going to go ba-boom. And um, we're good. It's kind of coming to the end of ship section now. There's a little bit of a sketchy segment coming through. And it's really, really fun. So, this is the one bit of the run we kind of have to do with no no weapons or anything. But we got a few enemies to dodge. So, we kind of have to rely on good RNG here. You can kind of bait the, the AI into doing exactly what you want. But it's thingy. Uh, this guy can sort of turbo here. He's a bit annoying because I'm already in red. I can ideally don't want to take the hit. And we're going to run directly at this guy to try and force him to jump backwards. Which he didn't do, but you can just one round him. It saves a fraction of a second. So, this is the most annoying bit here. 
A big molded is going to spawn here. Um, we're going to try and slip past this guy. We can't use the butter on that section. I run in, run out, and then we can manipulate his AI into running in a very set path, and you can just get by him no problem. Um, that bit can be a little bit tense because that molded can react in multiple ways, and it's really annoying. So, and chat, we... He gets stuck between him and that creep. Yeah, it's not great. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to skip a little bit of time here, and we're going to go straight into a cutscene. Now, this spawns us into a cutscene, and guys, we need to get some Fs in chat for my boy Jack Baker. So, we find out at this point in the run that Jack is actually a really nice guy. He's a really nice guy, and his only crime in this entire game is rescuing a little girl from a bog. He's rescued a little girl from the bog, and the little girl turns out to be, like, Satan herself. And he's just, he's a lovely guy, and if you play any of the DLC for this game, you see how nice Jack and Marge, and Lucas is a bit of an edgy guy, but he's not bad, per se, and Zoe's really nice, and they're a lovely, like, you know, Southern American family, and just, just living their best life, out in the sticks and the boonies, having a good time, and... They get absolutely ruined. Their entire life is ruined by the E-type virus. Um, and he explains a bit about what happened to them. Like, they get infected when they pick her up. And thingy. But yeah, big F's in chat from my boy Jack here. He's, he's an absolute hero. And Jack, we love you. He's also, incidentally, Jack is possibly one of the best characters in any Resident Evil 7 game. A Resident Evil game, sorry, Resident Evil. He's the best in Resident Evil 7. He's kind of one of the best characters in any of the games. His story is completely, is so good. And the way his character acts and stuff and the tension he brings is incredible. He's also extremely well written. He has some yes. of the best lines in this game. Um, Hence, the daughter well, of DLC is great. Uh, yeah, that's it is. Kind of, that's the one that goes really into their backstory. I really like Jack's story. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, but yeah, he's like got the great line. Like he's got that quintessential Resident Evil Seven line where he's like, "Welcome to the family, son," which is just mm -hmm. so iconic. It's like you can't you can't play this game without loving that line. I it's so good. The rip on the end of Zoe at the very end of End of Zoe. Like, yeah, farewell from the family, son. Yeah, and that's cool. But, uh, end of Zoe is actually an incredible run. Uh, it's so much fun. So, we're coming up to the final section of the game now, guys, where we're going to go through mines. Um, the run kind of lessens in difficulty from this point out. I mean, the mine shaft is pretty is pretty pog uh, if everybody acts a bit weird. But in general, it's pretty, pretty good. So, we're going to push through doing it. I hope you guys have enjoyed the run so far. I hope I've explained it well. Just going to throw that out there. It's like world's worst run. But here we go. So, we're going to get freed by Mia, who's managed to come to her senses here. She's found us. So, this is basically just where it lifts off. And um, so, Mia runs up to the point. You do that cutscene, and then you're saved by Mia. Mia comes in clutch now and actually just redeems herself like an absolute champ. Also, Evie is so creepy in this background of this scene. So, Mia sort of sacrifices herself now so that you can escape, which is kind of like, thanks, Mia. Thanks, Bay. I really appreciate it. And, like, you know, she kind of sacrificed herself, but Mia is still being a little cow and doesn't let you go because it's Mia. I think we can, I think we can do this. Um, but, yeah, Mines is an interesting part of the run. We've got some nice menuing to do, and we've got we to pick up a new item that we've not seen in the run so far. So we're trying to keep it smooth through here. Oh, that was pretty good, actually. Um, I know that's, that looks really simple, but getting that, like, clip through that, um, thing is actually really difficult. Um, and that grate can actually cost you, like, three seconds. So, here we go. We're gonna push through, and we're gonna go through a little segment here. It's a bit of a walking simulator for this little bit. You kind of just gotta go through this bit to get to the mines. There's not much really going on here. So, if we do have any more donations, now is a good time. And thank you to everybody who's already donated during the run. I really appreciate it. You guys are absolute legends, and you've supported a fantastic cause. Yeah, there's currently no do donations, but the donations are going to uh, Crisis, the charity supporting people out of homelessness for good. Uh, they achieved this through education, training, and support with housing, employment, and health. And 100% of your donations will be supporting Crisis in their help to 
uh, to help people out out of homelessness. And in those donations, you can put them towards the bid wars that we have left because there's a bid war coming up of Resident Evil 3 to change the costumes. Yep, guys, and, you uh, need to get your money in for that. I mean, I, I don't know personally how many different costumes there is, but I, I want to see some competition. I've um, just yeah, got... So you can you can see we just went through and grabbed all the items from the item box. And we also picked up the grenade launcher. It does kind of look like a mixtiff grappling gun, but it is in fact a grenade launcher. Oh, that was um, lucky. And with, uh, with the infinite ammo, we actually have access to the neuro rounds, which is very useful for stunning enemies. Yeah, so as we dot out the chest there, so you saw me do some menu in there. I grabbed an extra item because I'm a little bit um, I'm a little bit bad at the game. We've got to shoot a bomb there, a very specific bomb that's kind of really annoying. I did some menu manipulation as well because my inventory was not set up right. So we're kind of flying now and we're going for it. Um, we gotta we gotta do our final boop the snoot, guys. So get your boops up in chat. Say goodbye to our little friend there, and we're going into mines. Now, mines is kind of fast paced. I kind of really like the end to the run. It's got a lot of really minor skill checks that you have to hit, and it's kind of a really fun section because there's a lot of action in it. There's a lot of like, you know, it's probably the most action part, part part of the run, which is nice to finish on. But it's also really annoying when you've done an hour and 20 minutes, you come to mines, and then you literally, you know, you can throw your entire run here. <laughs> So we're it still pushing one on. One of the most useful resets in the entire game. Oh, it does. Yeah, we're coming up to a massive time save in form of the reset that I will point out here. We're going to get turboed. No, we dodged him. So that guy's kind of really dodgy. Like you can, he sometimes just doesn't react to you and sometimes he's really bad. So we're going to make the shot there. Uh, Got to get rid of the bombs because it's faster to shoot them than it is to block them overall. Which is hence why we're trying to do it. We're coming through. And we're going to open this box. It's good to be square onto the box here. And we're going to come. Here we go. And uh, can I get there? Wait for the queue to appear. We go in. Uh, I kind of don't really need to do anything here. We're just waiting. Um, and now, in the world record strats, they do a completely different strat through here that's probably a lot quicker where they, like, do some very specific menu in and they go and grab a load of items here uh, just to save a couple... I think it saves, like, six, seven seconds overall. It's not a huge time save, and it's incredibly complicated, so unless you're going for world record, uh, you shouldn't really be doing it, to be honest. Um, it's although it's real risky. Yeah, it's also real risky because you can actually just lose a load of time, especially if your menu, if you grab stuff, goes slow and stuff. It's actually going to cost you time. So we're going to do a final retry here, and the retry here is to reset our run speed again. And it also, I think, helps manipulate the AI, the enemy spawns a little bit. So we're going to come through here, and we're going to wait for the retry to pop. We need to wait for the retry, which is there, and we're going to retry. So what we did there is we reset our run speed, and now we're going to start. So this is the most complicated section of this run now. Oh, God, I got stuck. So I'm a little bit out of sync, so we need to make headshots. We need all the headshots, chat. And we need to make these headshots so we don't get... The idea is we don't want to stop running. We just want to be ultimate pace here. Right, we haven't. We're, it's gone well so far, chat. It's gone well so far. Uh, I need to get this out. I use a grenade launcher here because I find it's more consistent. And then I just switch back here. Uh, this guy is a little bit annoying, but he can be all right. And then I just shoot the far guy here and you're through. That was really clean. Nice. That was very clean. Yeah, so anybody who's run this game casually will notice that gate, that bit is a little bit difficult. You get a lot of enemies spawning. And this bit is probably going to be the bit that shocks most casual runners. You run here, you stun these guys, and you just run up. So th I'd say that fight on easy for your first time is one of the most difficult sections in the game. Or on normal. Because you have to do this fight and you have very minimal resources. So you have to try and, like, use what you can find to kill those two molded down there. But this has gone really well. It's been a really good end to the run, which is good. And we're making yeah, it through. Especially after that whole circle going up and then those two are at the end of it. Like Yeah. It's, it's a very hard part of the run because you need to kind of conserve your ammo and get through it. Here we go. I have seen some madman doing a... I think it's Nolsey is doing a knife only at the minute. And mm -hmm. it just looks insane. I'm tempted to pick up knife only though as a meme run. Life Only Madhouse is an awesome run to watch. Uh, Nick's Issues is probably one of my favorite Knife Only runners. Him and Yasi. Him and Yasi are great at it. Yes. So, guys, we've made it back to the house finally after doing a massive detour. We've got creepy Evelyn just hanging around. 
trying to be creepy, but we don't care. We don't care, we're just like, Evelyn, get out the way. Get out the way, girl, we gotta get going. And um, we, we on it. We on it, chat, so we're gonna go make it. And um, we've also, we've probably only got one, um, we got one more sort of segment coming up now. Uh, one more trick we kind of have to do here um, to skip a cycle. So we try, we're try we going to try and one cycle Eevee explosions. Uh, I don't know if it has a specific name. Um, it's just like block trick, I guess. Here we go. I would call it one cycle Eevee. One cycle Eevee. Basically, it's called one cycle Eevee. So we basically, Eevee's trying to frighten us here. And we're just like, you know what, girl? We, we got a big needle, so get away from me. Here's where Evie's- I love her expression change there, which is like... She's just like, no. Um, and we're gonna see something coming up, guys, which I think we all need to learn in, as a general life lesson. And I'll point out at the time. So I run slightly wide there just to bait her, because she can run right at you there and actually cost you a lot of time. Um, so this is this is one cycle Eevee. So what we're going to do is we're going to block now when she does the first explosion. We're going to swing to the right and we're just going to hammer the use key. <gasps> oh, I didn't get it. Oh, I didn't get it. Sucked. I'm going to have to block this now and go for it. I think I can get it now. There we go. I got it. Right, so I missed one cycle Eevee, but we two cycled it, which is fine. Uh, I haven't failed that in like literally probably 30, 40 runs. There's some marathon luck coming into play there. And now, shock, guys, shock. <laughs> Evie was actually granny all along. And she also sounds way worse now. In Spanish, granny sounds incredible. Terrifying. Terrifying. This noise, in a minute, just listen out for it. I love it. Just like, how terrifying is that? Terrifying. It's literally the most creepy thing. That's, that's the stuff of nightmares. Granny speedrun went all the time, Matt. So we're going to just do a, we're going to stun lock uh, Evelyn here. As we can see, the reason you don't eat wheelchairs, chat, is you'll become a giant face on the wall. So never eat a wheelchair. That's my warning. If you're going to take anything away from today, don't eat, don't eat wheelchairs. Um, because they turn you into giant wall monsters. At least that's my theory as to why this happens. Also, this is this is a real missed opportunity in Resident Evil 8. This should have definitely been a boss fight. But all it's it really is is a giant QTE. Boss fight. Yeah. It's it's a... What do you want to call it? Um, it's a set piece. It's a set piece. It's basically a massive finale to the run, but it's kind of just a shame they didn't turn this into a uh, thing. Cursed wheelchairs, yeah. So here we go now. There's not much we can do here. It's all scripted. There's a small time save. There's two small time saves in this segment. One I will show you in a second, which is just to get out of her grip as quickly as possible. And the second is very difficult, and you'll see why, guys. And I'll, I'll, I'll point that out when we do it. Do you, do you want to explain the really difficult trick in a minute, Spoopy, when it comes up? Uh, just the saw in the hand? Uh, yeah, it's just the, how we do the, um, okay. how we do the, the last shots here. So, oh, yeah. so it's so the really is... complicated. So yeah. listen up, chat. So we're gonna get a call from our good buddy from the BSAA, Chris. Uh, he's gonna tell us to grab this gun and use it, which is basically the same about what we've been using. Um, but we're gonna try and shoot very specific parts of Evie's face. Uh, we don't want to shoot any of her tentacles because the tentacles don't count towards the damage. So you try to shoot her very specifically in the face. Um, Ideally, like that, you get a four shot. Four shot EV is pretty much perfect. Um, so you can actually waste all your ammo and die here. Oh really? I've never done that. Oh, so yeah. guys, just just as the meme there, it's actually the most optimal way to do it is to just not move your mouse and just fire, um, and you will four shot pretty much every time. Sometimes it doesn't, and I think it's if you're slow to start shooting. There's a tentacle comes in the way of the face, um, so you don't quite get the headshot, and it makes it five shots. But generally. Um, that's it, guys. We are at the end of the run. Um, and that is... That should be time, I think, now. Time. That's time, yeah. There we go, guys. That'll be time. Because I don't think the timer started properly, I will do the thing. But I'll show our boy Chris Redfield coming into play. So, this is how I imagine the first interaction leading into the next game goes. But I hope you guys enjoyed the run. I hope you loved RE7. Um, there's a massively awesome community around this game. And if anybody... 
feels uh, like they want to start running this game. The RE7 Community Discord, uh, you can find it on speedrun.com, is actually incredible. Uh, there's so much support there, and you'll find help. If you want to DM me, I'll help you guys. Uh, and if you want to learn this run, just hit me up, and I will give you a... I'll give you a... I'll help you as much as I can. And I want to give a quick shout out to Spoopy for uh, commentating on the run with me. At the very last minute, I had to check, like, my, my commentator that I had planned was uh, uh, busy or he was he was in a bad spot to do it. So Spoopy stepped in at the last second and came in clutch. So let's see what the in-game time is. A 1.31.20. Not the end of the world, but underestimate. Still a solid time. It's pretty good. I'd, I'd say that's about a top 25, maybe. It's not It's not the quickest run. I think sub sub 30 is when you start getting like top 20. So yeah, it's top ah, right. 31. Is probably like a top 30. It wasn't the quickest run, but considering Jack out of bounds, we lost about two minutes there. It means the rest of the run went pretty well. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you really enjoyed the run. And again, if you wanna if you wanna come and um come and learn the run, just uh give me a shout or go to the RE7 Discord where you'll find a lot of amazing people uh ready to help you out. Uh yeah, but I hope you enjoyed that. And that is Resident Evil 7 New Game Plus Easy. Um and yeah, hope you had a good time. I love you all. Mwah. Thank you for the donations and support this amazing charity, guys. Uh, and yeah, keep your eyes out for RE3, another incredible run with Daisy. You see in chat. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll hand it back off uh, to you. I mean, you basically did everything that I wanted to say, but okay. oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. But yeah, RE3 coming up. Uh, enjoyable run. Also, quick donation from Matt, uh, RPD, without a comment, but $10, thank you. But yeah, quickly into intermissions, a few ads, and then...